thank. I want to thank Ingrid and our speakers for this interesting presentation. The ICT program of innovation for inclusion is a successful case because it shows us how cooperation, articulation of different actors favors the replication of these good practices for inclusion of people with disabilities. In order to end the program of today, we would like to invite you to then participate to the next session that is called Access to Information and Web Accessibility. In this session, we will have the opportunity to talk about how how digital tools will allow us to solve um, daily situations, making it easier for people with disabilities, some situations in their daily lives. That's how it is, Andres. For this session, we will have the moderation of Pablo Lecuona, founder of Asociación Tiflonexus, a an Argentinian online library that is in Latin America that facilitates the reading process for blind people and people with vision impairments. We will also have the presentation of Alexander Nutnagel of Atos, a French multinational who will tell us about the accessibility policy and in digital inclusion in her company. Also, we will have the participation of Michael Milligan from Mobile and Wireless Forum that will talk about the initiative for this uh, uh, organization of promoting reports of access, of uh, global accessibility, and also we'll have Javier Gonzalez from the National Disability Service from Chile and the program on training of accessibility and inclusion for public officials. We also have Carla Mauch from My Differences, a Brazilian NGO that develops books in multiple formats accessible for facilitating and promoting the access to reading for children with disabilities. And last, we will have Jose Correge from Plena Inclusión, an, an Spanish NGO that has developed a program, Planeta Facil, that offers news in for an easy reading in order to guarantee the access to information for people with intellectual disability. Welcome everyone to this panel where we're going to be talking about access to information, to digital technology and accessibility in general. It is a very interesting session where we've got presenters from Brazil, Spain, Chile, France, Belgium, where we can share our different experiences to be able to see how digital technology can be used as a tool to offer solutions on a day-to-day -day basis and work towards the full rights of people with disabilities. My name is Pablo Lecuona. I'm the director of Tiflo Nexus, a library, and I will be presenting this panel today and sharing my experiences as a person with a visual impairment. I have been working since 1997 on internet and digital technology. It was something really new at that point. And with a group of friends, we began with this idea of how could we share information for people with visual impairments. And so we decided to use digital technology to be able to solve a problem that at that point had no solution because there was no reading material accessible online for people with visual impairments. And so technology provided us this, the, the possibility of scanning books with screen readers to be able to make these books accessible. And so using screen readers, we were able to share all of these books with other people with visual disabilities. And we were able to share it all through the internet. So it was an initiative among a group of friends. And today, Tiflo Libros is the largest library in Spanish for, for uh, six, more than 65,000 titles in our library. And so we have the largest library for Spanish-speaking people. And the Tiflo Libros has also built up a network of people with visual disabilities so that they can share information, learn how to use technology. And it's been really a fundamental experience because it gives us the possibility of using that digital technology and it gives us a way to build accessibility, to streamline communication and to recirculate information among this population. 
And so I think we've been able to create a really strong network through this library. I mean, it was an initiative based on user needs, but we've seen that this is really built uh, into a global movement for people with visual impairments. And it's changed the rules of the game. And we've been able to produce uh, more and more books that are accessible to people with disabilities. And after several years of negotiations, we have been able to achieve like different agreements, such as the Marrakesh Treaty with WIPO, that establish the obligations of the sector to be able to uh, permit the use of copyright uh, uh, material by people with uh, visual disabilities to be able to share that information. And so it's really opened up that possibility for the generation of different networks, exchanges, so that different countries can share that information globally. And that has really optimized the use of resources. And in different countries where the different languages, French, English, we have a real possibility of growing our network and be able to fulfill the rights of people with disabilities and to be able to allow them to work under those laws of protection to be able to exercise their rights as well. And so we have begun to work with different entities at the global level to be able to negotiate, to try and create laws that can become a day-to-day -day real change in the lives of people with disabilities because access to reading materials is a basic right. And so if people with disabilities cannot access these materials on equal footing, they have poor results in terms of their educational performance. And that, of course, leads to fewer labor opportunities. So Tiflo Nexus and Tiflo Libros has been working to be able to bring these materials to within reach of people with disabilities so that they are no longer disconnected. It's been a work, a job of over 20 years that we've been going through this journey. And unfortunately, we are still re only reaching 1% of people with visual impairments in Latin America. We would like to reach more with services, with resources, to be able to take more advantage of technology and, and to be able to create an economy among people with disabilities and reach that huge mass of people that have disabilities and continue to be disconnected. And so we need to create more access via their mobile devices through screen readers. So if we talk about digital rights in the general population, we need to continue to increase access to technology. And we still haven't really addressed that digital abyss that we find many people with disabilities living in. So we need to combine our services that are directly provided to people and create something that is much more systemic, that it can really provide a true paradigm shift in terms of access to information, to put it on the agenda so that is a fundamental part of public policy and with the greatest visibility possible. And so little by little, we feel that we really are going to be able to achieve this. And now we are going to start with our panel, with our first guest. She's Alexandra Notnagel. She's German and she's part of Atos Friends. Uh, from 2018 as a consultant and since 2021 as the uh, director of the Accessibility and Digital Inclusion Program and the scientific community from ATOS. Alexandra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pablo, for the nice introduction. Thanks, Dad, please. Um, so, as mentioned, uh, I'm Alexandra Notnagel, a white woman in her 30s, neurodivergent, by the way, with long brown hair. And I've been working as a researcher in neuroscience and started disability advocacy with diverse NGOs seven years ago. And today I present you with my current role, the ATOS uh, Global Accessibility and Digital Inclusion Governance. 
Next slide. Next slide. So ATOS is a multinational information technology and digital transformation firm with 109,000 employees in 71 countries and are headquartered in Besançon, in France. If you use Google Trends, next slide, please. If you use Google Trends and you compare for search terms, you can see that the interest in digital transformation did increase continuously since 2014 and due to the pandemic, obviously. Nevertheless, the interest in digital inclusion and accessibility terms has stayed constantly stable, not following this trend. This is showing you that there's an evident gap in the interest and efforts done on creating accessibility as accessible digitalized space. And in this conference and panel, we are exactly interested in this. And in Atos, we do work on reducing this gap, aiming for inclusive digital transformation for our customers, ourselves, and society in general. Next slide. This is reflected in our statement of purpose, which is to help design the future of the digital space, making it safe, sustainable, and accessible to all. Crucial to note is that this purpose got voted by our shareholders. Also, the five core values defined by Atos employees support with its first value to be inclusive. Next slide. Accessibility pioneer Jim Tobias once said, inaccessibility is kind of like pollution. For us, the logical extension to this idea is to take frameworks designed to address pollution and apply them to accessibility. Next. Poor accessibility is a negative externality of the production and planning process. It is unnecessary as pollution. Next slide. With our corporate social responsibility, we do align programs around purpose, people with accessibility and diversity program and planet with decarbonization and sustainability programs. And we link those to non-financial reporting and compliance, as well as profits, obviously, through business solutions with our external clients, as well as internal customers, our employees, to help them to be more productive and satisfied. Next slide. Our approach to accessibility is to deliver full ecosystem, access, ecosystem accessibility based on our experience in tackling climate topics. Accessibility and inclusion can follow the decarbonization approach. We address accessibility issues from all areas of business environment and look at three types of impact. The first one is the direct impact of the solutions and projects that we design. And from the beginning on, the, the, this process needs to consider accessibility. Also, indirect impact is important. Here in the supply chain, we need to buy accessible. And, and all along uh, the value chain, also with sales, it's important to keep accessibility in mind to foster accessible products. Next slide. Our holistic approach was applied last year by joining two pillars, decarbonization and accessibility for the creation of our new eco grant. The design elements have been selected to be more sustainable and minimize carbon impact on one hand and accessibility on the other side. We now have two user interfaces for all internal and external documents, a dark mode for digital use and a light mode for printing. Next slide. Here is a demonstration of the slide I showed before on the three scopes of the approach in the white mode. Now switch to the next slide and see it in the dark mode. Colors uh, are WCAG compliant in the modes and help readability with the new font. Next slide, please. Atto started the accessibility and inclusion journey almost 20 years ago with the first client contract for the BBC and assistive tech. We are not only the first digital company having joined of Cacarond, uh, the valuable 500 in 2019, but we are also the French IT service provider with the highest employment rate for people with disabilities in our sector. The first global accessibility policy that I present to you is signed in 2019 and implemented in all country offices with the dedicated program since last year. Next slide. This policy defines that when we speak about accessibility, we mean the degree to which a product, device, service, physical, digital, or cultural environment is available and usable to as many people as possible. Companies often do not achieve 
to build fully inclusive environments due to focusing on a single element such, such as assistive technologies. Our aim is to ensure the ease of use by people with varying capabilities, including but not limited to users of assistive technologies. Um, one slide back, please. One or more. Thank you. So in Group, group Rebel, we de disseminated the definition of disability of the UN Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities, saying that disability results from the interaction between persons with impairments and attitudinal and environmental barriers. Next slide. We do our understand our role as IT company to foster the usage of technologies to reinforce and unlock positive culture change from exclusion to inclusion, breaking down technical and physical barriers, allowing for social change to occur. The program addresses also human resources, as well um, as employee-led culture change to create a culture of belonging and respecting the nothing about us without us. We do not wish to support specific segregated solutions, keeping people with disabilities apart from others. Next slide. We designed the accessibility program to be systematic and transversal, because just like with environmental protection and security, prevention is better than cure. Next slide. The program is twofold, addressing our own transformation as well as the transformation of our customers. It is built on three pillars. The first one, looking at inclusive business growth of our customers, business partners, um, uh, with accessible solutions. The second pillar is operational excellence and compliance, looking at our portfolio, our systems and processes, our own IT, and the human resources from hire to retire. The last one, and this is linked to today, is the connected ecosystem for the social the change to occur. We collaborate with um, our communications and um, in, in uh, yeah, external initiatives and collaborate with partners like Valuable 500, ILO Business Disability Network, Business Disability Forum, Foundation Answer, and many other on local level. Uh, on this uh, work and program, a, a global and regional accessibility practices with experts, empowers and supports to analyze, deliver accessibility with the different work streams. Next slide. The global governance is led by my manager, Neil Milliken, and our currently five regional accessibility practices experts teams do support the services that I provided before. For the Spanish-speaking um, countries, I invite you to get in contact with Ricardo Garcia. Next slide. We are taking our business partnerships um, with other IT leaders on accessibility and inclusion very serious. This is one um, way to show you the actions which we can do as, as IT company and also integrator. We rolled out globally the Microsoft accessibility features in our digital workplace and also do so for our clients. We've as well developed accessible training curricula for all our employees and an accessibility champion network for employees with disabilities. We got awarded for a good job in Spain, for example, for the recruitment of people with disabilities in the cybersecurity sector last year. We deliver public and innovative events yearly, inclusion hackathons, also the ICT for Inclusion Challenge, which we ran for Africa last year and for India this year, and also Global Accessibility Awareness Day events uh, are held since nine years. As a global partner of the Olympic and Paralympic Games, uh, we do actively support the We the 15 mo mo movement with um, several campaigns. Thank you very much for your attention. And yeah, the next slide. Last slide. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a view of, of one of the We the 15 campaign um, designs as well as in the, the team's background for, for those of you who can see they're so supportive from the Paralympic uh, Games visible. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation uh, to be in this panel today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra. It's so essential the work that you're doing. It's such a value that you're investing in this and to make sure that it's available in all areas of your company. Now we're going to move on to our next panelist, Michael Milliken, 
He is the Secretary General of Mobile and Wireless Forum, an international association that reports on different types of mobile devices. And he's going to talk about the Global Accessibility Reporting Initiative, which is a database that discusses the accessibility features of different uh, mobile devices. Please go ahead, Michael. Thank you very much, Pablo, for that introduction. And thank you very much uh, to the organizers of this conference for inviting us uh, to participate. Uh, it's great to see uh, the Zero Project uh, becoming uh, wider and being seen by more participants around the world. Um, and so it's been, it's great to, to see that taking place. And of course, it's wonderful to be able to participate in this session, uh, along with uh, um, some fantastic colleagues and co-presenters. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to the whole conference. Um, today, I'm going to talk about accessing information on accessible devices. And um, I'm going to begin with the question of what is GARI? And GARI stands for the Global Accessibility Reporting Initiative. And it was developed uh, back in 2008 by the Mobile and Wireless Forum um, to provide information about the accessibility features of a range of devices, um, including mobile phones. Uh, that was where we started from. And then we extended that into tablets, uh, connected wearables, and uh, most recently, smart TVs. And as you can see here from the screen, um, there is a large number of features that are available today in all of these devices. With mobile phones, for instance, we report on 136 features that um, are commonly available in devices today in the phones. And so we believe it's very important to try to help people understand what features are available in their devices um, and also to find the devices that have the types of features that they need to best suit their needs. And that really is GARI's fundamental aim, to help consumers, to help people find a device that best suits their needs. So how do you find an accessible device with GARI? Well, first of all, go to www.gari.info, and that's the website that GARI is, is located on. And you'll be presented with, uh, with a very simple um, option. So what do you want to find? Do you want to look for phones, tablets, uh, mobile apps are also included, connected wearables, or smart TVs? And you click on the section that for the devices that you'd like to um, learn more about. Then you have a choice. Is you can either select what you're looking for in terms of um, a device that's suitable for different types of needs. So you can go fairly broad, and, and as we've indicating on the screen um, by selecting the hearing and speech selection, you can do that. Uh, amongst the phones, and then you can even specify the region that you're looking for and the country. Or you can be very, very specific and look in amongst any of those 136 features that I mentioned at the beginning and actually select the specific features that you would like in a device um, that you find is important for you. Once you have uh, made that selection, the database will then uh, show you the results and also allows you to then select up to three devices at a time to compare those devices. And just like uh, in a normal uh, environment, uh, it will then go through and compare all of the features of those devices, indicating which of your selections have support those features or not. And so that allows you to um, hopefully make um, a really informed decision about the features that are available in your device. Of course, finding about the device um, and the features that it support is one thing. 
actually learning also about how to use those features is another critical important area for people. And therefore, we've produced um, a, a growing number of videos now that actually take you through and show you how you can actually set up a device and how it can be activated um, within the features can be activated within the device. So these are also available and they help to address that, that gap that exists in terms of um, knowing about the features, but actually how do you implement, activate them within the device. So Gary's activities, um, as you can see, are, are fundamentally about helping the consumers find the device that best suits their needs and requirements. It provides information on the accessibility features in the devices that are on the market today. So it is very much about real-time um, information for the benefit of all users. It also provides important information between manufacturers and users in terms of providing information about what type of features are people looking for and what do we need to see more of within devices. Another area that the association actually does a lot of work in is supporting research in this area. So, uh, for instance, we've been looking at the social, um, the return on investment, social return on investment um, that comes from accessibility and trying to make, um, looking, sorry, looking at how um, GARI is playing a role in, in um, national procurement programs and in other areas. So the research function is a very important role for us to also play. And then, of course, um, the last function of GARI is to promote knowledge about and use of existing accessibility solutions. So who can actually use GARI? Well, it's pretty obvious, hopefully, from what I've indicated already, that consumers are the principal audience, but also that extends to carers and those people that are assisting um, those with particular needs. Uh, it also extends to user organisations. So organisations that represent people with particular needs uh, can also use GARI, um, as with governments and regulators, uh, telecom providers and device retailers, um, therapists and other professionals that are providing a service or providing help for people um, that may not be aware of the types of features that might uh, make that device more accessible for a person in their particular circumstances. To help all of these uh, different types of users, we actually provide the GARI database in an XML format to all these organisations so that um, they can customise the presentation of GARI in a way that best suits the particular needs. Um, so whether that is a government a regulator or whether it's a telecom provider looking to provide um, a service for their in-store retail staff, whether it's a, for user organisations um, that are looking to, uh, that may be representing those that are part of hearing, for instance, that might just want to feature a subset of GARI uh, on their own website and present that information. That's something that we can do, and we work with a large number of organisations to facilitate that. And that information is actually provided free of charge. So if uh, or any of the uh, audience um, participating today or watching the presentations uh, are interested, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us so that we can, uh, we can facilitate uh, your involvement in, in GARI and helping to improve uh, people's knowledge about the devices and the features that are available uh, to them. And so I'd like to thank, at, thank you at that point um, for your uh, attendance and uh, for your interest in this topic. Um, as I said, uh, if you've got any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, or reach out to the company on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, or of course, you can uh, send myself or any of our team uh, a direct email, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
Thank you very much once again for the invitation to, to speak here. Thank you, Paolo. Um, back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. It's fundamental, this dimension of information about devices and the accessibility tools for people with disabilities and for the countries because the, the digital gap is not only to have access, but it's sometimes because we don't know about the possibilities of the devices and the options they give us. We're going to have our next speaker who is Chilean. He is Javier Gonzalez Rodriguez. He is an architect a master's with a master's degree in urban uh, organizations. And for 10 years, he's been leading the uh, CENADIS, which is the National Disability Service from Chile. Um, Javier, the floor is yours. Please share your experience from the state and the accessibility to public offices. Thank you, Pablo, for the introduction. I'm going to present the project prepared to include or ready to include of the National Disability Service of the Chilean government. I'm going to present first what's the problem to solve. In Chile, 20% of the population, according to the latest study on disabilities, has some type of disabilities, and they face these public buildings that between 8 and 12% would comply with the basic accessibility. And also 8% of the websites that would have or would comply with the parameters of accessibility to perform these activities online. From the National Disability Service, we were created under the law of 20,422, the National Law on Disability, whose uh, objective is to coordinate the state for the execution of public policies and social programs for disabilities or for people with disabilities. And we developed this disability uh, program to face that problem that I mentioned. That's why we have $1,150,000 that we divide into tasks. 50% of this uh, budget is for direct consulting for buildings that are not accessible and to be make them accessible. And the other 50% is for the training of public officials in terms of accessibility and inclusion. And I'm going to talk about this last part now. Ready to include or to be ready to include, preparados para include, it's a platform on training in which uh, public office officials receive training in universal accessibility and inclusion for disabled people. The matters that we talk about are the main concepts of disability that are part of the International Convention of People with Disabilities, which are these rights, which are the national regulations that uh, ground these um, disability and inclusion and in between or among them this regulation, how this works, what's the uh, universal design, etc. The courses that we have currently and we project to have in 2023 to have 10 courses. The first course is the introduction to the challenges of public services related to the training of public officials in the inclusion for disability people with disabilities about what is um, disability and how it is included. The second one, the one that is called the universal accessibility course for planners, for city planners that are responsible for the um, public buildings, and the third one is a universal accessibility in communication and, um, and information. So we train people to develop these uh, activities online, and so they have this, uh, they comply with the international guidelines. The next courses that we are going to create are related to cognitive accessibility, uh, web mobile accessibility, things that we uh, mentioned in the past or before, something that is very important. And in 2023, we were going to develop three courses, the universal 
designed for learning for teachers that are going to uh, be the teachers of children with disabilities, intellectual disabilities, and cognitive disabilities. We also we will also have a course on accessibility for the workspaces and also a course for the um, Tiflo technologies for the screen readers. This is for the labor inclusion of people with disabilities in the public sector. So far, we have more than 2,000 people that have already uh, started the first three courses, and we hope the new courses um, are seen by more public uh, officials to create this advanced public capital in this matter. That's my presentation. We thank Zero Project for the award they gave us, and we had the opportunity to present this project in a previous occasion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Javier, for sharing your experience. I think it's absolutely fundamental, the work that you're doing, training public officials on universal accessibility so that you can expand it to universal accessibility. And, and that way you can generate more accessibility right from the start. So whether it's a digital tool or a physical one. We're going to go on to our next presentation with Carla Mauch, who is a coordinator at Mais Diferencias. She has an educational background and 25 experience, uh, years of experience in different projects, working with people with disabilities. And for the past 10 years, she has been working on developing books for all and she's going to share her experience on this topic of creating books in multiple accessible formats. Thank you very much, Pablo, for the presentation and to my co-panelists. I'm very happy to be here at Zero Project once again. And I had to share this space with my Spanish-speaking friends. I'm going to be speaking in what we call Portuñol, a combination of Portuguese and Spanish, because our language isn't all that different in, uh, in Latin America. And so it's so nice to be sharing this space with you today. Today, I'm going to be talking about the organization that I work for, Mais Diferencias, which, where we've been working providing consultancy work for inclusive culture. And over time, we were able to see that students at school perhaps found that the materials, the books, were not accessible to them. And when some students had certain materials on hand, they, there were few materials available to them. We saw that in Brazil, a lot of the student materials directed at those with hearing or intellectual disabilities were, had a lack of materials. And so we decided to face this challenge of how could we provide a book that would be accessible for all? For us, we wanted to, to, to take that challenge of how could someone not have the right to access literature in a format that was accessible to them. It was a criminal situation. And so we have worked with people with disabilities and without to be able to build this initiative to create a design that is accessible to all. And so students are mixed together at schools and so we wanted to create books that are for all students, those with and without disabilities. In this sense, the works that we, uh, the books that we are working on, work with different resources such as text, narration, audio descriptions. We also work with Brazilian sign language, easy language and reading. We work with animations and soundtracks. So that helped to expand the context of the content. It's very important to us that these books create 
are not just about the resources, but that bring together materials for people with different disabilities or ways of accessing text so that everyone can access it together. So the resources need to be educational tools. For example, audio description is fundamental for children with visual disabilities or who are blind, but it's also a very powerful tool for to increase literacy. So for us, all children have that right and that possibility to learn to read in different ways and have different ways to access literature. Exactly the same thing with sign language. If we want a, an inclusive society, it's fundamental that all children who have hearing disabilities or impairments also have the right to uh, education uh, the same, on the same level as someone without those auditory uh, impairments. So we want to be able to broaden the possibilities for inclusion and create reading and literature possibilities for all. I think in Brazil and many other Latin American countries, the tools for access to reading are very, there are very few resources available in our countries. And so for those people who did not receive that possibility of training in reading and writing can use these uh, books that we are producing to be able to have more access to culture, to entertainment, to reading materials. We also produce support materials for teachers so that they can also work with accessible books in the classroom. We currently have more than 70 books that are free and completely free online. And we have several different resources for accessible materials. We work with people with different disabilities and different ages so that everyone can enjoy the same book. We get them involved right from the beginning because training people to read is always something that is complex. But historically, we have seen that people with disabilities were not given the right to learn to read. There was like a book that was for them, but we want to train all types of readers. And so to close my presentation, we're going to show you a little video about the experience that we have had. The pro educational projects that we've developed at Mais Diferencias have allowed us to see that students with disabilities don't have the same access to information, primarily in terms of the reading materials that they're offered. Accessibility to books through Mais Diferencias has made such a difference because now people with disabilities can understand the information they're provided. I think it's so important to have accessible books for all so that people can learn and understand about the material that they're reading through accessible sign language and other accessible features. I think it's so important important. These books are not just thought of for people with disabilities. They help many people, including immigrants or people with a low level of reading abilities or new readers, elderly people, for instance. And it can also help us to insert uh, sign language into the books themselves. We also use audio descriptions and narrations so that we can have many different ways of accessing the same text and reaching different audiences. The books are developed by groups of people with and without disabilities and with different levels of uh, professional 
formation. This means that our books are made for everyone and can relate to every type of need. When I worked with them, I was able to help them understand what they needed to transform into easy reading materials so that more people would be able to understand uh, because I thought that they might not understand the explanation that was provided. With Mais Diferencias, we've been able to participate in different con uh, conversations so that we can understand how to transmit all of this information through Portuguese sign language. We have more than 50 books in multiple accessible formats available. They're all free and available for download, and they've been made available through different partners and social media. Thank you, Carla, for this presentation. It is very important to visibilize that people with uh, sight disabilities, we have difficulties in accessing the reading of information. And it's very important to have these uh, possibilities of these uh, type of books. We In Argentina, we have this type of organizations with easy reading. And have, we have also been able to change the act and the uh, regulations of the MacRech uh, treaty to include these in the exceptions to the author's rights. And now that we talked about the easy reading, we are going to present our next speaker, who is Jose Le Corrige, in Spain, Director of Communications of Plena Inclusión España an organization that joins 950 organizations of people with intellectual disabilities of and also their families. And they, he will talk about the initiatives of news in easy reading, in simple language, in clear language, that is Planeta Facil or Easy Planet. Jose, the floor is yours. Thank you, Pablo, for your kind introduction and Zero Project, an organization that is of very good or very well recognized prestige and with, and Spain has been cooperating with this organization for many years. I want to introduce Planeta Facil, which are the news that are easy to understand. It would be very nice to live in, an, in a planet that is easy to live at, in a planet where we all understand regardless of the disabilities we all have. In Plena Inclusión in Spain works with, in Spain with people with disabilities and their families. And that's why we thought of creating this global project of communication that would address or that would try to explain the news, the newspapers, the magazines that many people with intellectual disabilities cannot understand because they are uh, created or written with difficult words. And I want to introduce uh, Simon, one of the uh, speakers of Planeta Facil. There we go. Hi, everyone. There are some great news. Planeta Facil receives Zero Project 22, 2022 recognition as an innovative practice. Here we go. Here uh, for an easy way of understanding information. This presentation Simon gave us in a very tiny video that we saw in the social media is related to the recognition of Zero Project to Planeta Facil as a project of easy to understand news. This was at the beginning of this year. And Simone with Eva, they are the uh, anchors and they are people with intellectual disability and they are the presenters of Planeta Facil TV. He also presents our radio program. The easy to understand communication, it's a revolution in the universe of social media. Because we are talking about cognitive accessibility. We also talk about universal accessibility, but in many times we forget that 
hundreds of thousands of people with disabilities do not have access to these accessibility measures in Spain. It is a fundamental right that has been recognized by the parliament. In 2022, the cognitive dis disability has been recognized as a fundamental right. La Cognitive accessibility has been recognized as a fundamental right, but not only for people with disabilities, but also for people uh, with um, understanding or comprehension problems or elderly people or migrants who do not uh, understand our language perfectly, and they can also get a benefit from this, um, benefit, from, from this uh, right. Planeta Facil was created in 2021 as a group of channels of communication that want to explain the information for people with greater comprehension difficulties. So we created this television program, this radio program, and we also started with our, a website since 2017. And that on a daily basis facilitate content for people with intellectual disabilities and for other people who want to understand the world and have access to the information in an easier way. First, I wanted to talk to you about this web of Planeta Facil. Every day we adapt the news from the main media in a format of easy reading. We not only explain the news, such as the Labor Reform uh, Act in Spain or the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. For a person with an intellectual disability to see the news, they maybe don't understand everything because it's full of difficult words or, or words that are difficult to understand. And unfortunately, um, these this is a very difficult planet for many people. And from Planeta, from the website of Planeta Facil, this is also led by Antonio Hinojosa, who also has intellectual disabilities, where we uh, clarify um, information or false uh, news or fake news. And also, we have uh, seen the work provided by different organizations. In 2021, we wanted to be part of the television world with Planeta Facil Television. And here we have a spontaneous uh, work. Um, and also we've been working with the third uh, greatest agency of news that is called Semimedia that is presented by two people with intellectual disability. It has become a media phenomenon and it's um, presented in 60 uh, local television channels. And we haven't started Stopped, but from 2022, we started with the um, accessible information with National Radio from Spain, which is the main um, radio from this uh, country. And also, this is presented by Simon Marco, who is on the picture, and they um, show to a very big audience and show this uh, thing about the uh, intellectual disability. This is my presentation. I encourage you to continue to follow Planeta Facil. In internet, we have them in our social media of Plena Inclusión España or Spain and in our YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Zero Project. And we are going to turn this planet into an easier planet to understand. Thank you, Jose, for this great presentation, something that, fortunately, we see the need of information to be accessible, to be easy to understand for those people who have this intellectual disabilities. And we're going to close this panel. I'm going to ask each one of the speakers a sentence that gives a conclusion that summarizes their view and where this is going with their work, of this work with the access to information and the web accessibility. We're going to start with Alexandra. Thank you so much. Very interesting talks today. So for um, the summary, what I'd like to point out is that with the access, uh, acceleration of digital transformation, 
a lot of new information will be created in digital and web format, and everyone has a responsibility to make this information understandable to all. So every employee um, generating documents needs to use features to keep them accessible. Every company should ideally have a policy on ensuring accessibility and base their own transformation of internal and external services on on yeah the guidelines that already exist and yeah so the the wish that that I bring out to 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 our yeah business partners to our customers is to take into account accessibility while conceiving the the, the new yeah solutions that are produced thank you very much Gracias, Carla. Michael. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, what about you? Hello. Um, I, I think in this uh, particular world where we're getting more and more smart devices, um, and smart cities, and it just really uh, is so important that not only do we have these devices, which can you know, really change people's lives, and that's that's wonderful, but it's also very important that people understand what features these devices have and how to use them in a way that can really maximise their usefulness to people and to really bring about the accessibility potential um, that these devices have. So I think that's that's my key message uh, for today's session. And thank you very much uh, for a great a series of uh, presentations. Gracias, Mike. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Michael. Gracias, Michael. Javier. Thank you very much, Michael. And I'll go over to you, Javier. Well, when we think about the technologies, we need to think about them for all five senses. With, uh, we need to think about machines without the necessity of a monitor so that everything can be accessible. Universal design and accessibility has uh, is integrated in everything that we do. That is my message, that we need to integrate everything for all. Thank you very much, Javier. And we'll go on to Carla. Thank you very much. I want to continue to work to build a world that is accessible and available for all people. And that reading and the different ways that we read become a right for all of us. Thank you very much, Carla. And we'll go to Jose. Technology could be a great ally in fulfilling our rights, especially the rights of the most vulnerable. And technology can facilitate and help that cognitive accessibility become a universally recognized right. All of us can build an easier planet for everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone for participating in this panel. And thank you to all of our presenters today. Thank you for everyone that's been is, uh, watching the session. I think we now have the challenge to continue working and we have this Ally in Zero project. And so we need to continue to work for a world that is more accessible and easier for all and that incorporates all of these products and services for use by everyone. Thank you very much.